Welcome back, returning viewers, to Masterpiece Theatre, where we are continuing our 12-part journey into the world of Harry Potter fanfiction with the 2006 literary wonder, My Immortal. In other words, welcome to Synergy Bonus! <laughs> I... I... Do you not want to hear the story of Ebony, Enemy, Dark, Apostrophe, Ness, Dementia, Ravenwing, Ravenway, the 17-year-old American vampire at Hogwarts? I, do, I, I, I really don't. don't. <laughs> okay, then we can get rid of this shit because that's a piece of shit. Oh, my God. I'm a horrible person. Yes. Who's covered this? Yeah. Is it your new goal to break us at the start of every episode here? It oh. might be now. <laughs> As we said, welcome to Synergy Bonus. Goals. Jeez. Oh, <sighs> we are drinking... What are we drinking? I am drinking... Not enough. <laughs> Aha! That's always the correct answer. Actually, let's start with what Greg's drinking, what you're drinking, what I'm drinking, because mine's a little more... Artisanal. Sure. Okay, I'm drinking a post-road pumpkin ale. Because Greg's our resident pumpkin person. I'm a basic white bitch. You are. <laughs> I, I'm just being boring tonight. I'm cleaning up the last of our uh, leftovers from Halloween, the uh, Great Lakes Nosferatu. Ding! You stop that. You stop you that. Stop boring. that. And I am drinking a homemade concoction tonight. Not, not a mixed drink, but a... Uh, well, it is a mixed drink at the end of the day. It's a holiday drink. It's uh, it's glug. It's uh, Swedish. Yep, Scandinavian. So, Swedish Christmas drink. And... Uh, I'll actually post the recipe below. It's because really alcoholic. It's really alcoholic. It's really you, good. You really should smell this stuff. And uh, it actually goes good with gaming. So, cheers. But uh, you don't have the walnuts and the raisins I, not in Not this there. one. I, they have the raisins in the fridge. It's uh, almonds, not walnuts. And that's I'm thinking his... about walnuts in a drink now. <laughs> that sounds awful. And that's his raisin de Oh. Uh. What are we talking about game-wise tonight, gentlemen? <laughs> tonight we're taking a step in a different direction. We're not actually talking about a game per se, so much as a module. And also our first foray into 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. Second. Well, our first foray as Synergy Bonus. Oh, God. That's right. <laughs> um, we, well, actually, it's my first time playing 5th edition. I ran 5th edition first. It's true. Yeah, Whitehaven. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... Uh, but anyhow, we're talking about the Killer Kobolds uh, <laughs> module written by Tony Patera. Or is that am I pronouncing this right? Patricia? Patricia? Uh, it depends. Is it Greek or is it Italian? P e t r e e c a. Patricia. I couldn't tell you to be uh-huh. honest. Right. Well, anyhow, Tony's a brilliant writer, uh, and he's brought us what's functionally Tucker's Kobolds, the game here. Also known as I hope you like traps and ambushes. I liked traps and ambushes. I liked this game a lot. <laughs> this module, rather, yeah. uh, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, I played a class I never, I actually never played. Um, I think a lot of us did, with the exception of yeah. I think you never played a monk. Nope, first time for that. Yeah, but you played a paladin. You've played paladins before. Yep. Yeah. So I played a rogue. He played a monk and paladin. Here, which I've actually never played a paladin. Uh, Oddly enough. In tabletop. In Warcraft, yeah. yes, I've played Paladins. but yeah. um, So this is a, a, a standalone module, or it can be rolled into a few other things, uh, most specifically Tales of the Yawning Portal. Um, for characters level 8 to 12, uh, it's intended for a team of somewhere between 4 and 8 players. Uh, how many did we bring to the table? 6, 7? So, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Nope, 6. 6. Because so Ryan was jamming. Yeah, we were right at the middle there. Um, we didn't level at all. We started at level 8. We did not level. Mm-hmm. But he did allow us to do a little pre-scenario before getting into the module. Yeah. Just to get a kind of feel for our characters. And also to get magic items. Because we a couple not having items. any out of generation. Uh, as stated, this was the first time for a lot of us playing a different class. This was the first time for several of us ba- or jumping into the 5th edition uh, update, uh, which is all right because fifth edition feels a lot more new player friendly than previous yeah. editions did. Like 
they took some aspects of 4th edition and got rid of them, but kept the ones that worked and then kind of worked around that. Yeah. Um, it's the, no longer minis, the game. But minis always help. Yeah. Always help. Um, We're advocates of minis, we just don't think that they should be mandatory to exactly. be played the game. Um, they've, no condensed, they've condensed the, uh, the character sheet to one page. Um, they've taken out... I still managed to make it three pages. <laughs> yep. Mm, you had spells and stuff. Ability um, description. They've taken out feats, but you can still take well, feats. there are feats, but they're not something that everybody gets. Right. Because I ended up taking an improved initiative versus a uh, stat boost. Yep. Which I did the same no, for uh, defensive fighting. And it worked out very well for me in the end of because I was a rogue... And by the end of it, I was a very terrible rogue because my rolls were just, just awful. And we'll, it's more to we'll, do your dice than we'll, else, it, It's my rolls. My rolls were awful. No, your rolls. And I shut my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll get into that. We'll get into that because of the module and kind of our little story here. It's kind of a combination of the module, 5th edition, and a war story all together here. So, yep. um, so anyhow, the, the backstory behind this, uh, by this particular setting is that, uh, you know, there's this peaceful little, deliberately generic town of Thornyfoot that's, you know... That was what it's called. Thornyfoot was the town. I don't um, remember. We didn't spend enough time in there to no. really remember. <laughs> no, we didn't. didn't matter. That's exactly... It's Dungeons and Dragons. It doesn't exactly matter at the end of the day. for a reason. I it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Um, and, you know, they're tooling along as little medieval villages do. Everything is fine and dandy until a child disappears from town. And Several. Children. About one child to start. There's a little girl who was last seen wandering up Cragden Creek uh, towards the abandoned mansion of a famous gnome bard now deceased. Okay. I remember now. Yeah. <laughs> it took a couple weeks to get through this. It's, uh, <laughs> it's a couple weeks. Based on how many times we got together and off weeks and whatnot, it took us the better part of three months. Yeah. Well... <laughs> Not that we saw good, just we didn't get to play that very it's often. ideally supposed to be between 12 and 15 hours of playtime, according to the description. I think we had, like, at least six play sessions. Yeah, and each of our play sessions is right around three hours long. Mm -hmm. So that's 18 hours. We were a little slow. But then combat really dragged a lot. And also, we tend to get sidebarred a lot. That too. Sometimes. No, I feel like we didn't get a lot of sidebarring on... This particular one. Not as often as we sometimes do. And then you got to take into account that we had that little, like I said, little uh, intro story yeah. that he's yeah. in there. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, 12 to 15 hours. It's not bad. Uh, you've got a really good, really adept team. They may knock it out in, you know, two, three sessions. you got a more casual team, you know, three months. Uh, <laughs> but, um, so... You go chasing up the creek to find this girl, uh, and this is an adventure in four parts, minus you know, minus the fifth part that was a, a an intro that our DM had written for us to ease us into fifth edition. Um, and you're immediately hit with cobalt, with traps and snares and rifles, right, yeah, sniper rifles, like the tactics, legit, legit tactics, tactics. Like guerrilla warfare fighting stuff. It's. Uh, it's not for the type of group that likes to negotiate and play uh, diplomatic games. <laughs> that's that's definitely the for certain there. Um, it's also not for the group that's immediate first response is just hit it really hard and be done with it because these fights drag out into wars of attrition because guerrilla warfare. Yep. And it's like they want you to kind of go after them because guess what? Trap. There's a trap. trap. <laughs> yep. And, of course, the dreaded cobalt air cavalry. <laughs> Winged cobalts dropping bombs on you. It's always a good time. And I, I can't wait till we start talking about the traps and the instance. Like, just everything was executed so beautifully by our GM there. Yeah. And it's just like every time it's like, got me again. Yep. Fucker got me again. <laughs> yep. um, it is supposed to be a, a very high fatality kind of game. We didn't really experience that despite not having to dedicate healer. We did feel kind of rough, like in some areas. Towards the end when we especially. burned through a bunch of stuff and couldn't afford um, to take a rest. Yeah. Because, uh, what, what is it, uh, what are those things that you get that where you can roll your die to heal yourself? Hit Everyone dice. gets hit a hit dice. dice. That's something new to 5th mm -hmm. edition. 
and all of us have burned through our hit it, dice. It's really an extrapolation of the second wind from 4th edition. Mm -hmm. Although second wind is also a thing for fighters in 5th edition. So. so we blew through that. We blew through most of our healing spells. And um, there was a, a scene where like there was a bunch of potions and the GM had to roll to see if they would break and whatnot. And I think he was kind of a little more generous there. because we didn't have an actual healer. Yeah. But... Uh, like we we really what? rationed out those portions by the end. Po that, portions, portions, potions, portions of potions, portions, portions of potions. Um, well, that's a that's a thing about fifth edition. It's one that I'm kind of lukewarm on. Like it's built and designed in such a way with the mechanics that you don't need a dedicated healer or a dedicated cleric all the time to get through it because they wanted to get away from the whole. Um, you know, everybody's geared up for attacking and is going to have a lot of fun stuff to do in combat. And you're sitting back behind a shield going, heal, 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 buff, heal. That means you're not playing cleric properly. Yeah. What I remember about fourth editions, like cleric, it's like, I go up, I hit you, and because you're next to me here, you get this many dice healed to you. And that was their first attempt to get away from the heal bot stuff. Mm -hmm. So I guess that was a step in the it's right like There are a lot of fun ways to play a cleric, but if you're playing, uh, you know, third strictly... If you're playing 3rd edition with a war cleric and an evil cleric and nobody knows any healing spells, you're in for a bad time. Unless, you know, you got a necromancer to go and have the undead. Yeah. So, I guess, uh, child went missing. Yeah. Little girl went missing, you track her down. Uh, do we want to give a full play-by-play -play no. for this? Because, you no. know, it's relatively new and people might still want to play and get the surprises. No. Okay. Uh, we, I guess we can just touch on some, like, highlights. Yeah. I don't know. Um... Mm -hmm. I guess it's weird to do this for a tabletop, but I guess spoiler warning <laughs> um, for this uh, because it it was it was good. Like uh, I'm thinking when we got to the gnomes little bar fort, the staircase retirement home, the the staircase up. Yeah, that was so. Fun. <laughs> this is the first set of traps that uh, that we went into. And I'm searching. I'm searching. Nothing. I'm not finding anything. Okay. Again, he's our rogue. We've sent him first as our scouting party because you're a burglar. Go burgle something. And I'm not finding anything. He's I also go... a halfling, incidentally. Yeah. I, I start going up these stairs, and a voice comes and says, go away. Blah, blah, blah. The master doesn't like guests. Does, does this three times. You've been warned. I get to the third time. Uh, there's no traps. No nothing. I open the door. <laughs> All of a sudden, I'm falling off a mountain. Big gust of wind blows him right off a cliff. And I get hurt pretty bad. <laughs> that was our first hint that uh, rushing into things and not taking our time to think through stuff was going to be a bad time. And it turns out that uh, that voice was basically just a spell. It was an illusion spell. It was, just, it was a pre-programmed message. Because he went up there right after me, shield and toe. Yep. And a pre-programmed message. Pre-programmed message keyed to an alarm spell. Yep. Yep. And, and then that's when the combat started to ensue. <laughs> then the cobalt showed up. <laughs> uh, and yeah. There were so many points where I was glad because I was actually built to be a mounted paladin. Yep. That I did not have my horse because my horse would have been killed very quickly. Yeah. Did you have a horse? Yep. I had a squire too, which the explanation was then that the squire was tending to my horse. Stay with the ship, R2. Yep. Yeah. But like you know when we were traveling there down to the like the along the river, down the river and whatnot, yeah. I was surprised that that didn't come up that you didn't have that you had a horse you know yeah. we also had a wagon I didn't you know that horse we had a wagon I thought we just hoofed it the whole way my God you, you and um, not Forest Joe was it Alphonse you and Alphonse totally not Forest Joe we swear uh, <laughs> basically hoofed it on the opposite side of the river scouting and stuff. That was some awesome stuff. But, yeah. um, um, well, the rest of us are busy absorbing arrows and uh, <laughs> the rest of balls. us. You mean? <clears throat> okay. Well, not you because you had a shield, and not right. me because I was a monk and I catch and deflect him. So as as Travis painting the scene, we're going up a river, mm -hmm. and it, Creek. It splits off. So me and uh, our ranger go off on one side. Alphonse. The rest of the teams off on the other side. He's he's the paladin. He's the shield and whatnot. So we armor. So we're up there. We spot traps and everything, but they're so far away. Ah, can't can't tell you anything. 
So we do the next, next best thing. We start picking off the range weapons. And it worked pretty well until someone triggered the trap. Actually, I think it worked pretty well until we got up to the uh, Viet Cong holes. But... Well, yeah, there was and that too. And then I started jumping at them. <laughs> yes, and that was really cool. But they had contingency plan for that. That's fine. They were it's killing all... themselves. That's all I cared. It's very much an exercise in, oh, look how clever the dungeon master is. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, it's, it's all a it's all about being one step ahead of the players. It's like, okay. One step? These guys are the... Again, this is a pre-made, and uh, Tony here is four steps ahead of any player he could come up with. So basically, yeah, so Greg's jumping down these little murder holes here, and it's like, no, we got a contingency for that too. Let's just collapse it. That's fine. You're committing <laughs> suicide. That's all. It's like, I personally wouldn't have jumped down there. That just seemed like a suicide mission, but this one's crazy enough to do it. Rudyard Kipling told me never to go or pursue a snake <laughs> down his hole. I mean, no. <laughs> That's mine. The first three points of damage, if they're not magic, I ignore them. Also, but, okay, do you ignore suffocating under a ton of dirt? Divine health! Someone tripped the tripwire, though. With the, the Was it a log or a... Yeah. You tripped that. Yeah, I managed okay. to dodge, actually. Somebody was functionally playing the Trap Basher Barbarian variant. Um... Basically, it was a lot of, like, the traps that the Predators, or that Schwarzenegger set up for the Predator. Traditional, attritional warfare yep. style traps. Very guerrilla warfare mm-hmm. um, And there were some elements of spaghetti western mixed in there as well. The sniper. Yeah. The snipers. And it's a, a very, uh, very tactical, very, very fast-paced, very combat-heavy, um, very just slog your way through it kind of. Mm-hmm. We tried to Metal Gear at one point, that didn't work. It started to, and then it just fell apart. Um, I'm thinking about this other section where we heard like little like stones coming loose, and then just water. And oh, as, as soon as he was describing that, I got, oh, we're gonna oh, get gosh. drowned. <laughs> Canyon like that, yeah. Yeah, it's like this is gonna be a drowning. Section. Most of everyone was okay. I wasn't. Jordan wasn't. I was managing to soak no, being bashed into the cliffs. Jordan was fine because... He managed uh, to jump. Or was it Heidi? No. Heidi had trouble. It was me and uh, Heidi that had trouble. Alphonse and Rosafina dimension doored to the top of the cliffs. Yes, they did. I remember that um, much. So they were fine. It was... Pretty Dur- much everyone. Dirge, Dorn, me, and you... Tito. Had, <laughs> Tito had a, a really... You know, the red pedal butcher here. Had a, a really a rough time, really bad time. With Whereas I managed to soak getting slammed into the rocks. Yes, by you the... did. You did. You did. I mean, you kind of handled the traps really well for taking them full on sometimes. Yes. Except for that one we're, last we're gonna... trap. <laughs> we'll Fuck that. that. We'll get to that here. Um, um, I don't know. the The game is really well put together. I think any weaknesses or issues we had stemmed more from the inherent flaws in 5th edition. Like, it, it suffers from some pretty severe uh, class balancing issues. Case in point, your class in particular with the monk. I was playing a monk, and at level 3, monks get to pick a tradition. This is a, like a, a, a monastic too. tradition. And the three that are detailed in the core Ooh. book are the Quaking Palm, which is your Ooh. traditional rapid strike. Um, I'm going to be Yang from... FF4. Final Fantasy IV kind of monk. Uh, the next one was a, um, a Shadow Stepper, Shadow Gripper, something like You're that. You're a ninja, basically. And it, there's nothing basically about it. You were exactly that. A ninja with the uh, ability to sort of shadow walk like that guy from Skeleton Warriors. Um, I picked variant number three, despite endless forums on the internet saying, Don't, Don't pick, pick variant th- number three. And there's a reason. It's... I forget exactly what the school or the tradition is called, but you're an airbender, essentially. But you're the last airbender. You can pick any element you want or mix and match. Um, and it's got a lot of interesting powers. It's got a lot of big, heavy hits, you know. Um, but the monk has its own, I guess, energy source, we would call Key. it. Energy pool. Insta- yeah, an energy pool as opposed to, like, a barbarian's rages or... Um, you know, a spellcaster's mana or a hunter's focus. Um, monks get key points that they can spend to activate their powers. And a lot of the basic monk stuff that was free in previous editions costs one or two key points to 
to do all that kind of fun stuff and activate it. And, you know, to use the feather fall to have the poison resistance to catch an arrow and throw catch it back. an arrow and throw it back. Um, to use your multi attack uh, or rapid strike or any of that stuff. Um, and the problem going along with that is that a lot of those really big flashy monk moves also require between one and three key points. Um, mm. Now, there were times when I was clearing out entire swarms of enemies, but it was one shot and I was done and had to retreat to the back of the pack. Um, That's the thing. When you were able to do something, you did it very well. Very effectively, you're gone. But I had no ammunition. Basically, you got one shot, maybe two, and then it's done. Whereas most of the game, I was using all of my paladin abilities to heal the party, and then I just had my one ability to make my sword shiny... Give me my charisma bonus on my two hits. So, hey, look at me. Yeah. Um, my big thing was I got to re-roll ones on pretty much most everything. Yep. Except for skill checks. Attack, uh, saving throws for the most part, but nothing on skills. Uh-huh. And uh, I did find it amusing that towards the end I managed to tank the boss just by yelling at him. Yes, you did. Yep. Paladins don't have taunt. Now we do. So knights, on the other hand, <laughs> knights have challenges, which functions as a taunt. Um, but anyhow, you know, uh, and I guess there are other things within D and D. I didn't explore it over much, but you know, pretty much every of the ba- or every one of the base classes has two or three variant trees mm-hmm. that you want to pick one school or another of once you hit the appropriate level, and they all have one that is absolutely awful and you should not pick. To my knowledge from Paladins, it's the Ancients tree. Yep. Because I've done the other two so far. Yeah, right. Like, the biggest drawback to the Monk was that I could do all these things that expended all of my key, and unlike the rest of these guys who could get back, you know, spells or cantrips or whatever for taking a five-minute break, I had to sit and meditate uninterrupted for 30 minutes to recharge. Well, yeah. When we're pressed for time on a rescue mission, that doesn't It doesn't happen. work out. And... When we got to the final area, we were swarmed with enemies. Um, At the same time, we weren't just because they're kobolds; they go down real quick. And also, most of them were running for their lives. Well, this is one not, of the... not the, that's the final oh, final area, but like I'm talking the final. Oh yeah, approach. the key. This is this is one of the things where this differentiates a bit from t- more traditional Tucker's kobolds kind of situation. Um, if, you, if you're having a genuine Tucker's Cobalt situation, they're just regular, straight-out-of-the-book Cobalts. A lot of these were improved. They yeah. had like, they were commandos. Commandos, shamans, mm. air commandos, drake riders, and so on. So, yeah, it, it, there was a lot of, a lot of thrown at us. <laughs> yeah. this, this was a genuine army. We did, we did start picking up on the traps, like, real quick. It's like, hey... There's something up here. I'm not going here. I'm not doing this. I'm doing this. Even though my roll failed, I'm still going to try this. And it's like, yes, there's a trap here, blah, blah, blah. But because there's a trap here, this is the situation now. (laughs) But then, hey, that trap is just to make it so you're going to jump, and then you'll trigger this trap or this trap. That's where role-playing comes in, though, because we're all pretty (laughs) genre-savvy. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking it's like, oh, here's the trap here. The, The illusion on the floor has disappeared. Okay, I'm going down the ladder. That letter broke because it was intentionally done that way. Yep. Because the GM, again, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tony here, was also very genre savvy. He's like, well, players do this, so I'm going to do that. But uh, real quick, I want to kind of touch on that last trap that just, it got Greg and me and, and whatnot. I um, was pissed. Okay. That's a fault of... So we walk into a room, and I've been searching for traps and just failing so bad. So miserable. I just kept Why do we even have a rogue with us at this point? Like, and the thing is, if I rolled a one, I could detect again. I still failed. I was rolling two, so I can't re-roll. No, there's no traps here. What happened? Well... This old is a person s- trap spell activate. of old person. We come upon this sort of large room. It's a bit larger than the hallways we've been traveling down. And there's just this Enough single for cobalt. Two people. Well, that's the entryway, or that's mm-hmm. the hallway. Mm-hmm. The room itself was something and like. And there was the antechamber where he was. Yeah. 
There's this single kobold just standing in the middle looking like pants wetting terrified. We've been carving our way through this. And also this guy's been harassing us and now it's, hey, you're not going to run away. You're running out of places to run there, Kimo Savi. And our robe tells us that it's clear. There's no traps at all between us and our quarry. (laughs) Charge! So the group of us charge. Frozen. Frozen. Immediately. You're right behind me. I uh, barbarian, was, barbarian, yes, yeah, barbarian, right behind You're us. Scourge. Yeah, immediately hold person spell on the two guys in front of the, of the. So they're two prevented from hold. moving, and all of a sudden, <laughs> the floor just springs us forward, and we go flying into the wall. Over the cobalt into the opposite wall, taking fall damage and wall and damage. Wall damage, and, and just it was a bad time. all damage, and it's brilliant in its simplicity it really and basicness, was. and. I'm something sitting here going like, in older editions, paladins had something that gave them protection against this. Half elves did. No. You had protection against walls? <laughs> no, no. It's like, no. okay, hold person used to be a charm. Not, it's not a charm anymore. I was immune to charms. Yep. And, yeah. And it's just something little... inside Thrick died that day. <laughs> it's like, it's... okay, now we're making cobalt skin boots. It was just little things like that that nickled and dimed us on our HP. And when we got to that final room for the final encounter, we were so worried we just popped a lot of potions and whatnot. If the... And I feel like most of us didn't take damage. Speak for yourself. I said most of us. You, I you, was in uh, single digits at the yeah. end of the fight. You range combat motherfuckers were just fine. <laughs> Uh, I had seven hit points at the end. Yeah, I was trying to pick off everyone. So that's that's what I came idea. up with my massive strategy of, okay, I know how to lock his abilities out, and then it failed. It's like, well, there went that plan. I'm going to die now. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. yeah, like my initial intention was to just basically pick everyone off so they don't swarm you. And it worked. For, actually, what worked is then just uh, the spell, the rod that we had that just... What, walled everyone off. What worked was Rosafina rolling really, really well for like three attacks in a row. <laughs> That's what worked. And also, um, Dirge with, with the enlarged person and just the... Really I got nerfed. Yeah. Yep. A lot of, <sighs> a lot of old stuff like that got nerfed, uh, nerfed the hell in 5th uh, edition. Um, and maybe at some point in the future we should take a deeper look at some of the uh, changes between you know, fifth edition and the stuff that we actually like. Pathfinder. Uh, um, yeah. but, like, like we were saying at the very beginning, fifth edition is definitely very beginner something for very beginners. Yeah, like, there's it's, it's, a great it's thing very for, watered down. If you've got people or kids even that you want to introduce to the system and the world of tabletop role playing games uh, for the first time coming into it blind, fifth edition does a fantastic job of that. Um, if you've got older, more experienced players who want options. What not Pathfinder or Pathfinder. three five <laughs> is probably your yeah. go to. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like math. Yeah. I feel like math. GURPS. Uh, I like GURPS. Well, I somebody know. must, otherwise they wouldn't keep printing it. We like GURPS. Let's just keep printing it. That, that might be what it is at the end of the day. I don't know. Hey, if you like GURPS, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> if you like GURPS, we're sorry. Oh. Um. I don't know. We're kind of running a little bit long here. Yeah, I mean, let me wrap it up. I mean, it's a it's, it's a fun a, module. It's a fun module. It's a great way to have a, a nice little story for mid level adventurers um, without a whole lot of preparation. Uh, if you do use miniatures, make sure you have all the cobalts. There's a lot. Or a lot of tokens. Or a lot of a tokens. lot of cobalts. I think, um, I think we had one room where there were like twenty cobalts in it. What we end up starting to do is uh, he, he was using like poker chips, like little mini poker chips too. And uh, to denote like special ones, he would put a red poker chip underneath. It's like this one's different because... And then we ran out of cobalt majors so. and it's like, just this red poker chip now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I gotta say though, I mean, for, for kobolds and just whatnot, it was, it was enjoyable. It was a very... It was a good time. Experience. It's worth picking up. The PDF is something like four ninety nine on RPG.net. And it's linked down below. It's worth it. It's absolutely worth it for if you want to incorporate it into your bigger campaign, it's designed that you can. If it's just something you want to have as a one off throwaway, you can. It's wonderful. It's well designed and thought out like that. Go. Get get killer cobalts. Enjoy the uh, with a what is it, the camo cover girl cobalt? <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. 
That's terrible. <laughs> it's the reptiles. Terrible. They wouldn't have secondary or tertiary sex characteristics. It's terrible in all of the correct ways. Uh, Not true. Snakes have two penises. All right. Damn it, you don't know that until, you know, the sheath. So. Well, there's also sexual dimorphism uh, yeah. among reptiles. Females are usually larger. That's most animals except for okay. animals. Good night. And good gaming. Good gaming. <laughs> <laughs>